Hello and welcome to some of my friends read comics. We've got Vance. Sophisticated suspense. We've got Chris. Never thought to manipulate insects with my scents and juices. <laughs> and I'm Kia. Welcome to the show. That's a creepy quote, Chris. And Vince, Vince, yours is just on the cover. That was barely even a quote from the story. Come on, I, man. I think the last three times we've done this book, I've just said swamp thing. <laughs> you make my heart sing or something. Basically just you singing wild thing. Different? Yeah, I yeah, tried to mix yeah. it up. I'm sophisticated now in the year 2020. Wow. Sophisticated sis Vince. Uh, yeah uh well we are uh, we are reading some swamp thing today how, how long has it been about a year we did some uh swamp thing volume three 25 episodes ago episode 187 wow. incredible thank you uh and now we are moving on to volume four of saga of the swamp thing the alan moore run uh this is issues number 43 through 50 uh from 1985 uh, 86 uh, that's eight issues total of alan moore books that's a lot of book um, uh, now, uh, when I thought, looked at that, and then the last issue is a double side. I'm like, ooh, I remember 1963 being a, a, a quite the commitment because um, mm-hmm. he's a very dense writer. But this one's pretty pretty breezy. All things it wasn't as, yeah, it wasn't as lo- it didn't feel as long as I thought it was going to be. Um, and then we also moved on to Earth X number zero, which I uh, is the beginning of our new long read uh, from 1999. I thought the number zero issue was going to be a shorter one, but again, that turned out to be an extra long one that, like, you know, just tells the history of the whole Marvel universe. That's all. We'll we'll talk more yeah. about that later. <laughs> um, I thought it was going to be a shorter one. Um, and then, um, uh, yeah, I, I, that's that's it. A lot of lot of stuff here. Let's jump into it. Uh, Swamp Thing. Number 43, Chapter 1, Windfall. Uh, I should say there's three artists kind of working throughout this arc here with Alan Moore. We've got Stephen Bissett, who has been kind of the main artist. He's on most of the issues here. Uh, Stan Watch, Stan Walk, W-O-C-H. Um, he fills in on a lot of the issues throughout this, uh, almost as many as uh, Bissett, actually. And then John Totalbin does one of the issues as well here. So three different artists. Um you know, you can tell the difference. Besets like the main one. He's uh, really good. But let's uh, let's just jump into this one. Uh, the first one is by Stan Woch. Do do we have a verdict on how to say that? What do y'all think? Woch or Walk? I go Woj. either way. I didn't think. I, I didn't know. All right. Well, let's just never say his name again. Uh, <laughs> the <laughs> or Woke, because don't we call them the Koch brothers? K O C H. Makes sense. It makes Ooh, sense. Stan woke. woke. No. Wo- go watch. Go brach. Um, so no, um, <laughs> well, because watch, walk and woke are all other words. And I think it's, uh, now I feel like I'm making fun of this poor guy. It's the guy's name. I just want to know. We're just trying all to right. be inclusive. We're trying to make well, sure you that know, we recognize if we, we were, if we were really trying, we would have done our research ahead of time. Let's keep going. Um, <laughs> we have, uh, Swamp Thing number one, uh, chapter one here. He's barely in this issue. Uh, it starts with uh, like a narrator talking about a monster in the woods, has big strides. Has, you know, just, concrete not cruise. just any monster. A boy. Yeah. The swamp thing. <laughs> swamp. <laughs> uh, we see like an orange piece of fruit fall off of him. Uh, did we see uh, his yeah. girlfriend, his wife, Abby, eating that last this time? This was the yeah. yams yeah. that like made her yeah. like high and like see some cool colors and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. It was. It was. They cool. had like a sexual experience, yeah, when she ate some of his yams. Yeah, yep. The, the, yep. this is uh, the, the last time he ate yams. Is the reason I read this book um, on paper and not digitally because it was really hard to like flip over with the, my screen kept on like trying to like rotate and shit. Um, so I read these books with paper now because of that. Because of the yams. Because of the yams. Wow. The yams are very <laughs> powerful, as we'll soon learn. <laughs> they were they were permeating <laughs> their magic through your uh, your tablet. Um, <laughs> So uh, we see this hippie. Uh, he's like comes upon this yam and finds it. And we know he's a hippie because he looks like one and he's uh, singing Beatles song and he's hitchhiking. Uh, and he gets a ride uh, home to Baton Rouge um, where, you know, uh, he's, he's studying this thing, looking for stuff in books about it. And then uh, a bunch of friends kind of come to visit him throughout the day. Um, and then Third Eye Books, was that also in the last arc at some point? I feel like we've seen this bookstore mentioned in this uh, storyline before. Was it? I'm, I, I don't know. Anyway. I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of the movie theater. I think um, with the with the zombies, but there's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't, I, I don't even know if these are his friends or if he's just a drug dealer. Also, and he's something like, like yes. that too. That too. Yes. Um, and they're like, oh yeah, the guy at Third Eye Books said you'd be here. Um, one guy, uh, Dave, comes by. His wife Sandy is dying. He's crying about it. He's like, he, he, she doesn't have much left. I just need something to ease the pain. And Chester's like, I'm trying to go clean. I don't really have much. But hey, this random yam might be good. Uh, take a third of it. 
Yeah, and he he has looked at it on a microscope, so he's like, there is like psychedelics in this. I can yes, tell. Yeah. <clears throat> and then um, a guy named Milo shows up. Milo's a lot less nice. Uh, he's a you know he's kind of treating Chester like a pushover. He sees the yam. He says like, oh, that's definitely dope. I want that. Uh, and he's like, fine, fine, I'll sell you a piece for for fifteen dollars. So he's like begging him to sell it to him. And he's like, okay, fine, thanks. I'll, 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 I owe you fifteen dollars. Bye. <laughs> True scumbag. Uh, then uh, we see them in kind of back and forth scenes. We see uh, Dave's wife, Sandy, eating the yam. She starts tripping out while uh, Milo's at the bar. He took it, too, and he thinks he's been ripped off because he's not getting anything out of it until he starts seeing his own body on fire. Uh, and he hears Alec Holland, Swamp Thing's narration in his head, and he's trying to, like, compete with it and be like, no, 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 I'm Milo. Um Sandy, on the other hand, is having a great trip. She is seeing the entirety of life, the whole, uh, you know, all the green, all that stuff that Swamp Thing has access to. And she like walks up and goes outside, uh, asks her husband Dave to come out there, too. And he's like, you, you need to be in bed, honey. She's like, no, nah, I'm good. Uh, Milo gets kicked out of the bar because he's tripping hard. Uh, he sees him thing himself as like a Swamp Thing in his reflection in a puddle or Swamp Thing-esque, not exactly Swamp Thing. He's freaking out. Nobody around him sees this. He still looks like a regular person, but kind of over the course of this issue, he's seeing everyone else as monsters and uh, just seeing the worst in everybody. Uh, I, I really like all the monsters in this book. Uh, meanwhile, Sandy and Dave, they're making love outside in the rain. They're having a great time. Uh, it's its overall very nice. Uh, Milo. This, gets this is when I, and this is the art that's a lot like the Abbey uh, Swamp Thing stuff that I was like, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. it's from two volumes ago, honestly. Um, that we read, so I was yeah. gonna say I vaguely remembered the games, but not very clearly. Not very clearly until I'm like I recognize this art style. So yeah. So uh, so after that night, Milo got run over by a truck and dies. Uh, Dave's wife uh, had a had a great trip. Uh, he reports to Chester and is like, yeah, you know, she died, but you made her last moments beautiful. Thank you. Uh, and he's like, I could I kind of got a taste of the game when I kissed her. Uh, someone should really market that stuff. Uh, then. The other guy who was hanging out at the bar with Milo comes to Chester and is like, hey, man, what the, whatever the hell you gave Milo, that stuff killed him. And Milo and Chester's like, ah, you know, other other experience was a was a good trip. Maybe it just maybe it just brings out what's already in a person. Uh, and the junkie's like, you got any more? Uh, yeah, Chester, I do like he pops his shades and he's like, all I know is that like made him trip so hard he died. And my question is, do you have more? Yes, I want more. <laughs> Uh, Chester kicks him out. He thinks about taking the stuff. Uh, there was kind of a little bit of a through, through line about he had just broken up with his longtime girlfriend as well. And he's like thinking about that. And he's like, nah, he doesn't, he doesn't bother trying to take it. Would you um, take the yeah. yam? Would you boys take the yam? Probably. <laughs> I don't think I would. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to come to terms with that. Whether or not I'm a bad person or not. <clears throat> yeah, I'd take the yam. You take I don't the think worst it's, that could uh, happen. What's the worst yeah, that could happen? You, give, you, you're, you light on fire and then you get run over by a car. Stay at home. Don't be at a bar when you happen. do it. That's the problem. You have to be you in a... be with you know. friends. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. As with all psychedelics, be with friends. <laughs> exactly. At, at okay. As with all... Or, or be with Swamp Thing. Um, <laughs> so uh, that, that's it for the first issue. It was a very nice one. We don't really see Chester again throughout this, but uh, kind of sets up some nice stuff with the rest of this. Uh, but mostly just a one-off here. Uh, into Chapter 2, Boogeyman. Uh, we have uh, some guy at a bar. He's quoting passages he's memorized. He's telling people, like, hey, give me a number 1 through 164. Uh, later, uh, spoiler, later we find out this is our uh, serial killer for this issue. Uh, he calls himself the Boogeyman. Um, and uh, meanwhile, back at Swamp Thing's, uh, well, it's Swamp Thing's wife's place, Abby. Uh, she is just kind of hanging out, and Swamp Thing crawls himself up through the sink drain. Uh, he was like, you know, I didn't want you to keep visiting me in the swamps all the time. So I just like attached myself to all the mold and the moss and stuff through the pipes and made my way up here. Um, she meanwhile has to lay down a bunch of, uh, newspapers so he can walk on it and not mess up the carpet. Uh, the the whole time she's just kind of like, all right, don't go too close to the windows. I don't want everyone seeing you're in here that kind of stuff. Uh, but he came by because Constantine still hasn't contacted him. Constantine was a big part of the last arc. Was he in a ch- a volume two at all, or is it just volume three? It was three, three I think, is where he was. Yeah. Volume three is when he really and, becomes and, a major character. And he was being very cagey. He was like, hey, mm-hmm. I need to take you to this place, mate. 
And then Swamp Thing was like, okay, I followed you here. Now tell me some more information. And he's like, no, this is serious <laughs> storytelling that's going to become popular in the 2000s. I'm not going to tell you anything. <laughs> This is, this is mature suspense. <laughs> sophisticated thing. suspense. Yeah, it's sophisticated. Yeah. You some, people gonna, some people, uh, Chris Carter from the X-Files is going to read this, and he's going to be like, yeah, that's how I should tell my story, too. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, Neil uh, Gaiman is going to read this and say, I'm going to do the first 14 issues of Sandman exactly like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the serial killers and all. <laughs> pretty similar. Pretty similar. Uh, so, um, Swamp Thing is just generally still not sure how to feel about Constantine, if you should kind of keep going along with it, but then he kind of quickly realizes he's inconveniencing Abby by being there and making a mess, and he kind of leaves sulking about it a little bit, he leaves through the drain again, <laughs> poor guy. Um, Constantine, meanwhile, is also at a bar, I thought this was the same bar from earlier, it took me a little minute to, re- to realize it's a totally different guy, but this is, uh... Uh, a friend of his, who we don't really know who he is just yet. He seems like a regular guy, uh, but it turns out he – I'll get to it. Uh, if he's a Constantine so, friend, which I probably hasn't been established yet, he's probably going to die soon. Yeah, um, everyone, all of Constantine's friends are oh, – Dead. So Constantine is a bad friend. Do not take yams with Constantine. <laughs> um, but Constantine's telling his friend, like, hey, don't worry about all this crisis business. We've caught up to, to the crisis here. Crisis on Infinite Earths going on in D.C. Um, he's like, hey, it's what comes afterwards you should be worried about. They walk outside for fresh air, and <laughs> guess who's there? It's Batman. And he's telling them, like, hey, you know, it's dangerous outside with all this crisis stuff. Y'all should go inside. And uh, Constantine's like, hey, don't worry. This this guy's one of y'all. He's a superhero. This is Mento. And Batman, like, has to think a minute. And he's like, were you – wait, were you attached to the Doom Patrol somehow? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I got married to one of them. You were actually at our wedding. <laughs> It's like, oh, yeah. Okay, cool. I, I got to go back. I love that awkward moment for Batman. Like, <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Can't quite place you. Yep. Every time any side character from a million years ago gets introduced, I want it to be exactly like this. Just yeah. down to the letter. And then with Batman's running away animation, he's like, I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Every time Skeletor, see like, you next time. <laughs> yeah, when, yeah, when like Slapstick meets Spider-Man, he's like, remember me? We met like... 30 years ago in my second appearance. And you're like, oh, yeah. Slapstick. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, let's see. Back uh, back to the other bar guy. Uh, he is the, the serial killer. He's gotten a ride home with some blue collar drunk. I think like that guy's too drunk and gave him his keys. And they're on a road. And he's like, hey, all right, we're looking for house number 97. We get a quote from number 97. Uh, and then this uh, serial killer lures the guy into the woods and kills the guy. Hmm. And, and every time someone says a number, we see the art of the eyes of the murder victim that this guy is thinking about. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Um, and he's like, ah, ha, ha, nobody will find the body for weeks. And we instantly swamp thing, find the body, and go, goes after him. Uh, this guy's monologuing about killing 165 people, about how he's better than, you know, uh, Manson and all the other serial killers combined. Uh, and we get a really good fight scene here, I thought, where Swamp Thing... <laughs> It's kind of like off in the distance and just kind of melts down to the ground. And and this guy's like, what the hell? He shows up and this guy cuts off Swamp Thing's hand and holds it up. And then the Swamp Thing, his his veins come out and like trap him. And oh, it's wonderful. Swamp Thing looks so monstrous and cool. And um, yeah. And Uh, and Swamp Thing wasn't really trying to fight him when he started like attacking him. He's just like, is that the boogeyman? I'll show him. And so, like, once he's attacked, he's like, oh, okay, this is a bad guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, th- I really think this this panel of him rising up from the ground, just hideous looking, like trying to be as monstrous and terrifying looking as he can. That might be my panel of the week right there. It's very good. Um, but he, he does have feelings about killing this guy afterwards. And he's like, you know, he just saw this endless void of death within him. And he, uh, you know, wonders... Uh, wonders more about Constantine and what he's going to show him and just, you know, thinking a lot about stuff. Uh, Constantine, meanwhile, uh, Constantine calls Abby, calls Swamp Thing's wife. He says, hey, can you send Swamp Thing to, Miguel, to San Miguel in a week? It's the last stop before the finale. I'm like, oh, OK, we're going to get somewhere. Um, on to. I did like how they tied yeah. in like loosely like the crisis into like. 
Yeah. It's a looming thing. Like, I mean, I'm sure it's editorially mandated and I'm sure mm-hmm. more had plans before a crisis was happening. But as we're about to learn in this next issue, uh, more does a really good job of dovetailing the two concepts together. I agree. Yeah. We'll talk more about that after it happens, but it is, uh, for a second, I was like, oh, are we going to interrupt this with a whole bunch of crisis stuff now? Um, yeah, yeah, sort we'll of for sort one of. issue. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Swamp Thing number 45 is a chapter three called Ghost Dance. Oh, I didn't mention the art last time, uh, flip-flopped back to Bissette, which is maybe why that, uh, that monstrous Swamp Thing was so God, monstrous. That final, like, splash page with him is so good. Like, I wish there wasn't, like, text on it because that's such a cool, mm-hmm. like, poster design. Um, but we're back to Stan Watch for this one. Um, we have, uh, this one, this one's another almost a little bit of a one-off. Uh, we have four friends walking through the woods. I thought they were teenagers for a while based on how they were talking, but then I realized, no, these are like adults. Um, two, yeah. two couples. Um, this does feel like an 80s movie. By yes. the way, this, this <laughs> issue not approved by the Comics Code Authority. Some of them are, some of them aren't, I've noticed, on the covers. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, what, this one doesn't seem like it would be. an objection about this issue? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got uh, these four friends walking through the woods to the house that Amy built. Um, and I love the title page here, being incorporated into the building. It's very nice. Um, but the whole story is that, like, this girl named Amy kept hearing the quote, the ghost's whispers, how the hammering must right. never stop. So this and is she... a this is a realish story, by the way. Are you familiar oh. with it? So, uh, based on it. yeah, they, they made a movie about it with Helen Mirren in like 2018. Me and my wife were about to watch it and it looked a little it got, got mediocre reviews. But it's about the creator or heiress of the Winchester family, the Winchester guns. Um, basically felt that she was cursed by all the ghosts of everybody that was ever killed by a Winchester gun, um, including Native Americans and everything. Um, and so she designed this crazy house to try to hide away from, and to confuse the ghosts in her home. Um, there's yeah, a Helen Mirren movie. House. Yeah. I don't know about the ghost part being real, but the, the real person <laughs> is definitely real. Yeah, okay. The mystery okay. house is, is real. It's not abandoned like this, though. It is a tourist trap. Interesting, interesting. It traps um, tourists? That doesn't sound good. That's, hap- that's what happened to these tourists right here. Um, yeah, the story is that there's 160 rooms in this place, 13 bathrooms. It wasn't built with, like, humans in mind. It was built according to the ghost's specifications. And so, like, the servants needed maps. And I'm like, what servants? It was like, did people live in this place? Uh, and... Um, yeah, so our couples, we kind of get to know a little bit more about them in these first few scenes. Dave is like the the nerdy kind of pushover who knows all the history about this place. Uh, Linda, his wife, is kind of a more uh, brazen, uh, conventionally attractive person. Uh, Rod is the brave jock. Rod and Linda are flirting a hell of a lot throughout this issue. Even though they're not a couple. They're not a couple. Yeah. Uh, that was confusing Jude, to me until later. I, and then Jude is Rod's girlfriend maybe she seems like she just doesn't want to be there um but it's a very interesting group of people which again these dynamics between them really at first i was like oh yeah this is definitely just like some high school friends coming up on a a a, a random uh ghost story they heard about it's weirder that it's adults but (laughs) it's uh, you know it still works um Anyways, Linda, Dave's wife, really wants to look in. She goes rushing in, and Dave's very worried because they're like, we're going to get lost in here. Um, Rob the jock also rushes in. Uh, he's not hes not really a jock, but uh, that's just how my mind placed him in this high school kind of uh, you know way that they, they were all feeling. Yeah, he um, immediately yeah flirts with Linda, and then is just like, that's why I'm, I'm very superstitious. I refuse to have sex with my girlfriend 13 times in a day. Isn't that right? A girl I haven't been flirting with. Right. It's so <laughs> you know, like, who, like, who are you with here? Yeah. But as we find out, it's both of them. <laughs> so, uh, so Dave, uh, uh, so no, Rod immediately gets lost. He runs into a random bedroom and he sees Linda there. And Linda is like, Hey, come over here. Let's make love. It's not um, Linda. We know who it is because the narration says that she's wearing a wig. Right. Oh, it, w- it did say it was a wig. I thought it just ended up being a ghost that was tricking him. It yeah, was. well, it is. But, a ghost but I don't think the, the, the I don't think the the book is trying to bait switches. No. no yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I kind of thinks re- it's Linda, but the right. narration makes it very clear that she's like got a hole in her head, and then she's like, "Ooh, a gentleman caller." Oh, I see. I see. I um uh, I get I get that now. I'm seeing what that's talking about. Um, 
So um, we, yeah, he like screams, he runs away from this ghost. And again, this place is built like crazy. He just runs down a hallway and out some door, which is basically a window. And he, yeah, he runs through like death. a third story door and falls yeah. apparently to his death. Yeah. Uh, Linda runs into the seance room and sees some ghosts there. Um, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to go into detail. We kind of meet a lot of these d- ghosts and kind of who's about them, but, uh, you know, they're just ghosts. It's not that important. Um, Jude sees some weird shit. She gets trampled by a, <laughs> some stampeding Buffalo. Um, Dave sees some weird shit and kind of runs away. He meets Swamp Thing and he goes, you came, uh, which I didn't realize he was expecting him. Uh, yeah, he because he's a know it all uh, when someone's like, knock on wood, what does that mean? And he's like, well, I guess it was like a summoning a wood spirit or something like that. And so when Swamp Thing shows oh. up, he's like, oh, you're the spirit of the wood. Thank you. <laughs> yes, he's he's, like, uh, yeah, he's starting to lose his mind a little bit. He's like, my wife Linda's in there. Uh, yeah, of course, this this wood elemental showed up to save me from ghosts. Yeah, yeah. Um, Swamp Thing does find Linda shocked in horror in that seance room. She's just, like, still in a corner on the floor. Um, And he remembers Dave's story about how the banging must not stop, the hammering must not stop. So he starts, like, banging his his hands thunderously uh, against the wood, summoning all the ghosts to his location, and presumably killing him. Killing him. They go out through the chimneys, I guess. guess Yeah, and they just kind of... Yeah, they, they evaporate, the ghosts are done. Um, Dave is outside with Linda now, his wife, and she wakes up and she's like, oh, my God, where's where's Rod? And he's like, oh, you know, it doesn't seem like they, they made it out here, but it's OK. It's, it's, as long as we're OK. And she's like, you dumbass. I've been fucking him for six months. I wish he'd made it out instead of you. <laughs> let's go get the car. He's like, uh, all right. Yes, dear. <laughs> uh, nice little twist. Um, Constantine, uh, meanwhile, talks to Swamp Thing afterwards, and Swamp Thing's like, you know, I really don't know why I came. It's all just more enigmas with you. I just want the truth. Constantine's like, all right, why don't you say so? Come on out, lads. And we meet uh, Benjamin Cox and Frank North. Had we seen Benjamin Cox in another uh, issue later when they're talking about how his mom won't come out to play? I kind of vaguely remember someone, some nerd living with his mom. No, oh, no. Anyways. He's, he's about Lovecrafty and stuff, and he's like, oh, this does look like the spawn of blah, blah, blah. Um, the other one's kind of like a leather biker guy from California. I don't know. Uh, but it's, they're all going to go it's see. Not, uh, it's not uh, Shia LaBeouf from the Constantine movie. I know that. Got it. Okay. <laughs> but I don't think all gonna go, no, I don't know. <laughs> they're all going to go. They're all going to go see the truth together. Uh, and our epilogue is uh, Dave buys a gun, and he's going to go have a little chat with Linda. The hammers must never stop. Mm, all right. Um, on to Swamp Thing number 46, Chapter 4, Revelations. Uh, Art is back to Beset here. Uh, we do kind of really come up on all the crisis stuff now. Um, the cover has Batman, uh, Hawkman, Phantom Stranger on the cover with Swamp Thing stomping a dinosaur. Hell yeah. Uh, I love that. I also dislike that this scene is a direct lie because we do see Swamp Thing stomping on this dinosaur and the other people aren't in the, the scene at all. Uh, that means even but it's drawn fist, like pumping like, yeah, it's drawn yeah. so similarly to the cover that it really threw me. It's like, how, how brazen. Um, but uh, yeah, with the crew uh, here with, um, with Swamp Thing, Constantine and the two others are all just like seeing all this crisis stuff happening. Um, ben, the nerd, is getting sent to London to get uh, Sister Anne Marie to see if they can find Judith. Um we don't know really who much of these people are. We'll learn more in a bit. Uh, Frank is going to go to L.A. because he'll be needed later for the next leg of the mission. Uh, and Constantine and Swamp Thing teleport away. So I'm glad we sh- joined up with these two losers because they're not important at all. Yeah. Um, uh, we get some great teleportation art here as Constantine and Swamp Thing leave. Um, and at first I thought they were kind of traveling through the earth web stuff that Swamp Thing has and that it was somehow taken constantine with him but no this is um this is the teleportation technology that takes them up to the uh, monitor's satellite uh for the crisis where he explains you know the world is not dying the multiverse is and they meet all the other heroes and they meet alex luther there uh and i really didn't expect that i think is there something so bizarre to me about swamp thing up in space on a satellite it feels wrong yeah, yeah. I, I think he does have a cameo in one of the issues of Crisis we read, and so it is funny. Yeah, 
this does feel like editorial of like get Swamp Thing in there with all the heroes. <laughs> yeah, has to be in there at some point. Um, yeah, but yeah, um, he's like one of those characters. Like he's not, he doesn't know them. Like it's yeah. like, I mean, it's it's not like the joking that we have of like Daredevil went to space to go to Captain Marvel's funeral, yeah. but it's kind of at that level. Like I don't picture mm-hmm. Swamp Thing in space. Like it just doesn't seem like that's a place he should be. It's like seeing a vampire in like daytime in a TV yeah. show. You're like, that's not right. Something's and he wrong. doesn't know. He's met what like two of these superheroes ever. Like I mean, he, he does. Knows, he's never met. He hung out with his crew though. He hung out with. With like Batman, and he hung out with uh, who else is it? Like a Phantom Strangers there. He's gonna go hang out with him, right? Is yeah, Constantine so. also? Yeah. Is Constantine cool enough to go up to the monitor station? I mean, Alex and Constantine seem like they're pretty in with each other, yeah. and and I, Constantine like, knows everybody, even though Alex yeah. Alex Luther is a year old, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I also love how dismissive Constantine is of the crisis. He's like, yeah, it's all going to blow over soon. This spaceship's <laughs> probably going to get exploded. Who cares? <laughs> it's fine. I love um, that, like, in retrospect. Like, like I, I'm sure, like, he's the one character in the entire, like, DC universe of these books. During Crisis, like, yeah, it just doesn't matter. It's going to go back to normal. It'll be fine. Don't worry mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. Um, everybody else is like, like, that's how I am when I read comic events now. I'm like, whatever. It's that's cool. I'll go back. Um, but he, but like, I, is explicitly saying it, and I love it. Yeah. yeah, and I do. I do really like the way they tied in what Swamp Thing's purpose in all this is. Um, Alex and Constantine are telling him that he'll be dealing with the crisis's effect on the spiritual dimensions mm-hmm. because some people have kind of, uh, you know, they're also in tune with all this stuff and they're planning to take advantage of everything that's going on right now. So he's going to help stop that. I think that's um, so cool. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, because because um, like I I think if Crisis hadn't happened, the story would have played out the same way. Not obviously this issue. But like I think more story would have done just the same, but like more cleverly used this like company wide mandated event to to launch his or to that folded into his story. I find that yeah. really clever and like using it as like an extra like button and like launching point to be like this is why the stakes are so high. Um, yeah. It's really fucking clever. I don't know. If, I can't think of anybody else who's done it. This way, maybe Brubaker with like the death of Captain America and Civil War, but even then, I think like the editorial line kind of like knew that was happening. Um, he didn't uh, like. Yeah, and I would say there's a there's a lot of in event comics and stuff difficult to tell a story that is, and I think it's actually easier than it is because I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I have seen this, just not done as well as Alan Moore, where it's just like, all right, something else is happening in the world that is caused by whatever is happening with your main event. But it's still separate, and the stakes can be important while still being unrelated to the stakes of the main story. Yeah, I, I'm uh, sure I've seen like nobody's paying right. attention to this. That's why these bad guys are going after this heist or some shit like that. Right. right. I've exactly. seen that probably, and so we're the um, only ones who can stop them. Um, yeah, I've yeah. probably seen that. Um, but anyways, um, they they give him the plan. Swamp Thing gets teleported back to Earth. Some more great art there. Um, and then he just sees some wild, weird shit. He sees a gang of mink people harassing a woman with a fur. <laughs> this is actually maybe my panel of the week. I love this one. Um, we see they've got masks on too. I love when animals wear masks, so you, so you don't know their identity. <laughs> it looks straight out of Ninja Turtles or something. Yeah, That's good. yeah. I do like her explanation. It was a gift. <laughs> oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> um, we see uh, Clyde from Bonnie and Clyde is watching a VHS of Bonnie and Clyde, and he's crying and wondering if you should tell Bonnie about it. Okay. Cred- credit to him. I mean, it's, it's somebody born in like 1890 or whatever that he was able to work at VCR. Yeah, good for him. <laughs> uh, but maybe it teleported into, uh, you know, his existence just playing already. Maybe that's possible. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, uh, it does say he like running it. No, it does say he watched it a bunch of times. So he rewound it. Yeah, so he's figured out v- VCR technology. Um, yeah, ju- and we see just lots of little random scenes of weirdness here. Um, and then Constantine, uh, Swamp Thing meets up with Constantine again and learns about kind of our main villains for this. Not the main, main villains, but the pretty main villains. They're the uh, the Brujeria, uh, a secret society of male witches in South America. Uh, and we got a lot of information about them. Um, if you are to join this secret society of male witches... You have to stand under a waterfall for 40 days and 40 nights, and that'll cleanse away your baptism. That's cool. Then you have to... I like that. <laughs> it is cool. <laughs> then you have to catch a skull thrown by your instructor from the crown of a tricorn hat. Is that cool? It's less cool. 
Yeah. The next one's uh, pretty then, cool. <laughs> then you have to kill your best friend and sign a document with your blood, with your own blood from your own veins, and so on, and so forth. The okay. usual stuff, says Constantine. <laughs> yeah, just to show you have no like compassion or some shit like mm-hmm. that, right? Um, this is all, but the worst thing is how they make their waistcoats. Actually, no, that's the second worst thing. But they flay the skin from a recent corpse. It's still got that human fat on it that glows a little bit, so they're kind of translucent and, and glowy waistcoats. I had to look uh, up what a waistcoat was because in my head I was like kind of like a belt. It's not a belt. It's like mm, a vest. Um. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and But the worst thing is the Invunche, the guardian of the cave, uh, because a few months ago they th- the Invunche threw one of his girlfriends out of a window. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how how that situation happened, but uh, he starts talking about how they make an invunche where they take a a six month old baby and disjoin its arms and legs, and he's like, you know what? I can't go on. I'm done here. This uh, is not approved so, by the Comics Code Authority. Nope. Fun fact: if you're so, like, oh, I've yeah. got to collect every single tie in a crisis, ooh, uh, Timmy's gonna have maybe... a, quite a lot of things to explain to mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will say, I know, um, you know, Wikipedia, uh, Google Translate, all those things didn't exist in uh, 1985. Uh, Pretty lazy. uh, Brujeria means witchcraft in Spanish, and it's also a feminine word. So it's weird that Mm -hmm. it's uh, all male. I thought so, too. Yeah. You you think it would be like Los Brujos or something? I was thinking the same thing. Only guys, yeah. That was. There's one later point where I was like, mm, Alan Moore, maybe not an expert on the legal system, <laughs> but maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe not an expert on Spanish either. Maybe the members like have a different name that is like a male uh, uh, noun, whereas just the name of their so-called coven is still feminine because they are, you know, uh, still it's, still respectful of witches. Maybe it's, I don't know. yeah, it's like this is the invisible ship we're all on, and it's a lady. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do know um, that the Brujeria is in uh, the, was in the Constantine TV show. They were setting them up to be like the big villain, and they were all female in that one. So they, right. which makes a little more sense. Right. Uh, I, but I did also just look up Invunche to see if that's a real thing. It's not, but Imbunche is a real thing, uh, which is a uh, well, not necessarily a real thing. It's uh, chil- chilote folklore. Um, it exists. It's a thing. Is it anyway. the same kind of backwards baby thing? Yeah, like deformed human with its head twisted backwards, uh, twisted Ugh. arms, all that. Oh, okay, yeah. and I saw that thing so later. Okay, all right. Yeah. 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 Don't don't like that. Mm-mm. Yeah. Don't worry, it's just a myth, myth a folk. A folk no, tale. it's not real. Phew. Not I real. Breathe easily. Yes, of course you can. <laughs> um, because so, your head's um, not turned backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, So we get some more horrific imagery here. Uh, The Brujeria is planning to bring something back. Uh, The nerd Ben is convinced it's Cthulhu, uh, according to Constantine. But whatever it is, it can't be good. He's going to send him to a special grove in the Amazon rainforest to meet the Parliament of Trees. Um, Meanwhile, we see in London Sister Anne-Marie, who they were going to be looking for. She's traveling around, kind of hearing a lot of noises and stuff behind her. Uh, her train car stops mysteriously. Just lots of creepy shit. She runs up some stairs because she's scared. She gets to like a locked door up there. And one of these invunche things with his head turned backwards comes up to her and kills her. Oh, no. Sister Anne-Marie, we hardly knew you. I thought it was a myth. <laughs> Don't worry. It's just a comic book. Oh, shoo. <laughs> um, on to Chapter 5, The Parliament of Trees. Uh, arts by Stan Watchigan. Um we have a uh, oh yeah, there, this issue is kind of framed by this photographer who's in an office, uh, t- telling a story about how he was bird watching and taking pictures p- pictures of this bird who was in a pond, and uh, the bird got scared away by a woman who was coming through the woods, and the woman got undressed and started taking a bath, and you know I just kind of kept taking pictures because there's other kind of magazines that buy other kind of pictures, you know. I was gonna ask her for her permission afterwards. It's fine. Uh, sure. If, of course you were. Uh, and, but then this green weird monster showed up and it smelled like manure and they were like hugging and they were real close with each other. And I couldn't hear what they were saying, but I just kept, kept taking pictures. Um, she ate something off him. That's uh, yes. Uh, and th- we do get a glimpse of what they were talking about. Swamp thing says he absorbed a dead muskrat. Uh, that's why he smelled bad. <laughs> uh, he was still, uh, you know, decomposing it. Um, and Constantine's like, oh, and Abby says Constantine called her 
uh, said that Swamp Thing should meet him at the source of the River Tefe tomorrow. Um, and photographer's like, oh my god, it was so gross. He was, he, she was eating this fruit. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm just trying to sell these photos. I came to you first. I could sell these things anywhere in the world. Um, we'll, we'll learn more about what happened to him later. Uh, Swamp Thing, meanwhile, travels to Brazil, and he grows up through the local fauna there. Uh, so I like that his design is different because the plants there are different. It's wonderful. It's yeah, uh, cool. it's my favorite thing, I think, about this, uh, this run of comics here. Um, but he meets Constantine as well as the natives who treat him with reverence. And he's like, I thought they were going to be scared. And they're like, nah, dude, dude, they've seen a lot of you before, <laughs> like a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, elementals. Uh, but the natives lead them down a path uh, until you know they reach a point where Constantine can't go on. He gets blocked off. Uh, and so they let Swamp Thing into the Parliament of Trees. It's a nice big two-page spread. Uh, Swamp Thing's kind of in awe of this little grove that's so beautiful with birds and trees and vines and all that. Uh, and he's thinking to himself, like, okay, it's nice and all here, but still no answers. And one of the other trees says, no questions. Swamp Thing's like, what? Y'all can hear my thoughts? And he's like, yeah, we're your ancestors, man. Uh, we're, you know, we're just like you. Swamp Thing says, well, no, not really. I'm not like a tree person. I'm not like a tree tree elemental. I used to be a human. And uh, this this lead tree guy is like, yeah, we all used to be human. Uh, and we kind of learn all their stories. They're all a little bit different. Uh, but they all used to be humans. Uh, you know, but the underlying pattern of their stories remain the constant. And then they come here to rest forever. Swamp Thing, have you come here to rest? Like, nah, still got a lot to do. I'm just kind of here for knowledge right now. Uh, so he says, all right, Swamp Thing, just sit, be still, listen, intertwine with everything. Um, and we get some really nice art of him just kind of merging with everything and, uh, you know, falling through stuff and seeing everything and how it's connected. And uh, he kind of realizes, like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm so small compared to all this knowledge that exists and he's like learning new techniques i think that's my favorite part of this that he kind of levels up throughout all this and mm-hmm. he's like i could i could i could like bring dead wood to life and i could <laughs> chris's quote i could manipulate insects with my sense M- multiple body control bug sense. <laughs> sophisticated <laughs> uh but like can i control multiple bodies is time travel possible um and then deep within whatever this vision kind of thing is he meets the faces of all the elder trees and he's like, hey, I, I'm trying to figure out how to use my power. And they're like, no, 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 no. That's wrong. That's not what trees do. Trees are all about being calm within oneself. That's the way of the wood. You're doing it wrong. Get out of here. And they shut him out. And he's, <laughs> and he's like, whoa, what? Um, and he goes back to Constantine. He's like, yeah, they told me to avoid power and beware of anger. And, uh, and they asked, where is evil in all the wood? Constantine's like, man, that's a ripoff. We're, we're going to Chile tomorrow where all the evil is. Let's go. <laughs> um, Constantine kind of talks for a while. He's really monologuing here. Swamp Thing says nothing. He's very bummed because he got cast out. Um, then we finish off with the uh, the photographer. getting. Th- he's also getting thrown out of this office uh, with whatever magazine is uh, trying to buy these photos. And they're like, all right, we'll call you when we reach a decision. They're all looking at the pics. Uh, they're like, ah, oh, you can see the zipper on this one. It's totally fake. Uh, but one of the little executives there recognizes Abby uh, because she works at some school or something where his daughter goes. And I was like, all right, well, now we have pics of her spending her weekends half naked with guys in kinky rubber suits. Uh-oh. That's a problem. <laughs> um, it, it's unclear. And I guess it's got you to the next issue. What the legal problem is. It is unclear what the legal problem is. I think I know, though. I think I know. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, she's banging dudes in costumes in the woods. That's that's it, against it, the law. Is it? Maybe in some states. I don't know. It makes you a it's sex possible. offender. It makes you a sex <laughs> Automatically. Offender. All right. Well, we'll get to Picture, that. Pictures later. of you make you a sex offender. Mm-hmm, yep. mm-hmm. Unclear. Unclear. Um. So um. Uh, on to chapter six here. A murder of crows. Uh, art by John Totalbin on this one. Oh, yeah. Who I think has been inking most of the issues. Uh, and he's now uh, taking the lead on this one. Um, but um, Constantine has been uh, searching the caves for the Brujeria. And he meets Judith down there. Who's uh, you, you know someone that uh, Sister Anne Marie was supposed to be looking for. And connecting them with. 
Uh, the other leather hat guy, Frank, he's there as well. Uh, but we've got no Benjamin, no sister Anne Marie. Uh, Benjamin's mom would not let him come on the adventure. Uh, and nobody has heard anything from Anne Marie. And Swamp Thing's late. Uh, no, he's not late. He mer- he grows up out of the uh, the grass. He's been there since yesterday. Uh, again, another great design here with his uh, his headdress uh, coming up. Uh, looks back. I like that he's more leafy because yeah, he's in the rainforest instead mm-hmm. of the uh, swamp. It's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, they uh, all head into the cave again together. It forks and they have to split up a bit. Um, Constantine sees that same uh, Invunche that killed Anne Marie. I guess it's probably another one, um, but it attacks him and knocks him out. Uh, Swamp Thing, meanwhile, is traveling through the green. He feels like something is wrong. He's still kind of mad. He wasted time with the Parliament of Trees. He's got a lot of anger in him right now. Um, Judith and Frank start flirting in the caves. They're like, you know what? We're really not needed in this story. We're just side characters. Uh, let's turn off the flashlight, have some fun. Constantine's going to be fine without us. He doesn't need us. Um, so they turn off the flashlight, and it seems like they're having fun, maybe, or something. There's definitely some yelling. Um, Constantine, meanwhile, does need some help. He wakes up in a pot slash pit. It's like a pit in the shape of a big pot, kind of. And there's little gargoyles on, on the edges. Um, and the brujeria is there. They've got him caught. And they're like, hey, we're your enemies. And you haven't respected us. We're going to give you a bunch of horror here right now. Um, and then Judith shows up. And in, in a nice little twist, even though we just met this character, the Invunche got to her in London, gave her a choice to join them. Uh, and she's accepted. They're going to let her join as a voladora, a special female messenger. She's going to have the power to turn into a bird. Uh, and she beheaded Frank also and like drops his head there. Yeah, uh, all the stuff that yeah Constantine said previous issue that they have to do like kill your best oh, friend right. all this other Ooh, stuff all that all that um so then these little gargoyles that are around this pit start puking up like this mud stuff into it uh so they're gonna drown Constantine uh, I also like this little detail that the brujeria has like a big uh it's almost like a dirt mound map of the U S and they're doing like swirly things with their staffs over it it's it's unclear. But I really like that imagery of them with the big map of the U.S. That's all. Uh, just manipulating it somehow. I know that what they're doing is bad. I just know it. Um, they give uh, – so, so it's time for Judith to begin her transformation. They give her this root to eat. And she's like, oh, my God, this is terrible. Um, the idea is this root is going to make her vomit up all of her intestines. Uh, so after she does that, the body is empty and useless. And it's just like this head with like this sack of skin hanging after it. And they're going to let that all wither and dry until it's just the head left. Well, that seems like instant. Uh, and she's still talking. It's just this head. And they put a, a black pearl in her mouth. In her mouth. And I'm like, all right, just start concentrating on regrowing your new body. Um, yeah. And I thought this was going to be like an ironic punishment. But I was like, no, the brewery were on the level. They turned mm-hmm. her into a bird all right. A hundred percent. But, yeah, they are on the level. I don't know how they had this magic, but they have it. Um, they uh, – so Swamp Thing starts to regrow himself in, in their vicinity. Uh, and Constantine's about to drown. He's yelling for somebody to stop the transformation. Um, we see this bird. It's a fucked up looking bird, honestly. Starting to reform. I hate it, but I love how much I hate it. Uh, and it's um, – it, it starts fully for it's got a big beak now and the black pearl is still in its beak um swamp thing meanwhile goes to save constantine and constantly like constantine's thinking you dumbass this is the wrong choice you got to stop the transformation but the bird has flown away it's complete the message is on the way uh-oh uh-oh and the bad luck will take them all uh meanwhile abby goes to work uh and a co-worker has a copy of this paper with a, her pick in there and the cops are there to arrest her for being a sex offender. Uh, although they did also say something to the effect of like, hey, you know, we've had a lot of reports about like this monster and you're cavorting with this monster. Like we need to take you in for questioning. But, but that's not but what the they cops, charge. She asked what she's that's being not, charged for. Yeah. And the cops did also say you're a pervert. <laughs> that's what we're taking you in. So I don't know. Yeah. Very unclear. I'm like, wait a minute. It's like you're working with kids and you're a sex offender. Like, uh, according to whom? Like, what? 
I mean, um, I know and this is what Louisiana probably is that where she's at. Yes. I know that like Texas had like sodomy laws up until recently. I don't know if there's something similar to like that, like the type of sex acts that they had in the pictures that makes her a sex offender by their standards. I don't know. <laughs> this is probably going to go. This, this is probably going to go. Chris, this might be the case that makes you like you, oh, you should it defend makes me. Abby. Yeah. You take it to the circuit court of appeals and then all the way up to the Supreme Court and then you make it legal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Well, the only problem with that is I am one year old, uh, so it's you're only one year old. Hard. One that year didn't old. stop Alexander Luther. Yeah, he can run a whole spaceship. You're, that's true. Yeah, um, I do like um, the uh, the nun before she was killed by that weird backwards baby. She's like, oh, I'm just going to read some of the Bible to soothe me and opens the book of Revelation and is like, I saw a beast rising. It had 10 horns and seven heads on its horns were 10 died. I, I feel like I have to do it in the voice of the character from Life of Brian. <laughs> not not three, not five, but seven. <laughs> I think like also like if you're reading like the Bible that way, like she's opening right to the end. Like, you know, what's at the end of the Bible? Yeah, like, yeah I just say it's the last book. Like, I don't flip got, like, open a book you know, for comfort. Like, and be like pages. I don't flip open to, like, the last 10% of a book for comfort. Usually it's somewhere in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever flip into any book for comfort? Um, I do have, like, coffee table books and stuff, you know, like, um. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah, I, I did buy it just recently. It's not published yet, but the uh, the uh, SG-1000 book series is all, it's by uh, Jeremy Parrish. It's all about the Sega system before the Master System. I'm very excited. I will put that next to my bed and I'll read it for comfort about like the Sky Skipper <laughs> or some bullshit racing very, game. Wow. And, yeah. Very nice. Um, uh, all right. So Wonder Boy, they don't teach it in schools. Yeah. and But I probably won't get to Wonder Boy because it's probably at the end of the book. Um, I'll be flipping <laughs> in the middle. Um, but either way, um, yeah. So Chris can't defend Abby because he's one years old. No, we and we, so we don't get any conclusion for this Abby story either. She's not in chapter seven or eight. This right. is all you know. Uh, no. Conclusion of our swamp thing. Story. Yeah, I assume see what happens to Abby later. I assume that'll that'll come back in fifty one. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll catch up. I assume she'll have already been convicted of her various crimes oh. of uh, having sex in the woods. Criminal. So so like uh, can, can Martian Manhunter not cavort with? with with humans or else they would be considered perverts or do they just need to not be teachers or something or work with children Cause... look i i don't make I don't, the rules i don't know the rules it's if you it's if somebody photographs you i think it's just sort of what it comes down to. if you did <laughs> it in a place consent. where people could photograph you i mean this is the without 80s where we we we, we um yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. anyways all right so on to chapter seven the summoning uh art by watch again um constantine the is watch still man. worried about this the Watchman, yes. Who watches Constantine the Watchman? Is... Thank you, guys. Uh, Constantine <laughs> is still worried about this bird. Uh, it's taking the pearl to a place beyond maps to wake something beyond naming. Uh, he's been Constantine's like, yeah, I've been planning this whole thing for two years. I've lost four friends, all for nothing. We lost. Uh, he, again, Constantine. That's why, that's why I brought up. That's why I brought up the uh, revelation stuff because, like, that's what. That's why he's bringing it up because it's like yeah this is the uh the, the they're like this is worse than leviathan or whatever this is you know not even antichrist this is uh the the evil is coming and it's unstoppable the root of evil yeah um the like uh, <laughs> the brujeria is still chasing them a little bit and attacks them um they're oh yeah they're still in the cave and swamp things like you get out of the cave i'll take care of them um Constantine is mad that the mud ruined his cigarettes. Yeah. Um, and then Swamp Thing grows from the ground outside. It sounds like he killed all the brujeria. Did we see that? Um, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, you can't get us in here. There's no plants in this cave, Swamp Thing. And he's like, we're in like the South American rainforest. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on. Um, so Constantine's got his contingency plan. Um and they, he goes to clean up. Basically, the rest of this issue is a lot of just gathering a crew and meeting anyone and every, everyone throughout the DC universe that might fit into this story. Um, he goes to meet uh, some rich baron, Baron Winter, uh, who's got a ton of artifacts and a leopard in his office. And they're just asking if they can use his home as a base of operations because uh, they need every available house, every available person. Um, and he's like, hey. You know, Sargon's helping, too. And Baron's like, all right, I guess I'll help with Sargon's helping. 
uh, late, later, I'm skipping ahead here, but Constantine meets Sargon. Sargon's not into it, and he's like, there in winter, then. Uh, I, I like that. I just like that, too. Uh, we see the uh, the bird flying over. The bird sees Captain Fate at home. He sees Cain and Abel Dr. fighting. Fate. Is it Doctor yeah. Fate? I Here's, wrote Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, he I wrote Captain Fate. He didn't before. go to six years of uh, psychic medical school to be called Captain. Thank you very much. But yeah. Yes. No, it's Pierce Brosnan yeah. from Black Adam. Yeah, of course. I did not see Black Adam, so I don't know. <laughs> Um, Swamp Thing meets Phantom Stranger and Dead Man, I think. It took a while for them yes. to name him. They just called him Boston Brand. If they named him, I missed it. Dead um, Man's been in our books before. We've been in Swamp yeah. Thing before. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, they're in some realm. And so is Etrigan. Yeah. Yes, Etri- Ed, friend of the show, Ed, the demon Etrigan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in, but they're in some realm, uh, like the, the nether realm, and he asks, uh, hey, Ooh. can you all keep an eye out for this bird? I do um, love I do love uh, Dead Man's. I, I know we we have to go real fast because there's even more stuff to go over. But I do like Dead Man's uh, reverse psychology because there he's at the like realm of the recently deceased where Abby went previously, and they're like Dead Man's like no we got to send you back. Uh, they revived you with you know a cardiac uh, resuscitation or whatever. He's like no my life sucks, and he's like Swamp Thing talk to this guy. <laughs> and Swamp Thing doesn't say anything. And he's just like uh, on uh, second thought I'm going back to Earth. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, they meet the Spectre. He's there. Const- okay, then Constantine goes to recruit Zatanna and Zatara. Um, Zatanna's pretty excited about joining this mission. Zatara does not want to go, but he's like, all right, I'm going just to keep an eye on Zatanna. Um, and then afterwards, uh, she and Constantine, Constantine's like, hey, yeah, remember our old uh, tantric studies group? And she's like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Ah, and they kiss a little bit. Uh, Constantine's a little bit of a player, as we, uh, yeah. as we learned. Yeah. So, so Zatanna's been around for a while, I would assume, but this is probably like Constantine's like seventh or eighth appearance ever. I can't imagine anybody else is using him. Um, mm-hmm. But this is like laying out like, oh, he knows everyone. Um, yeah. This is also... All the um, magic people, yeah. Yeah, this is definitely like the Justice League, like dark that would eventually happen. It's just like kind of like the, 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 the magic half of the DC universe. I also like that Zatanna has this like snake thing in the part of her hair. Um, my daughter has like a, like a DC superheroes book. And for some reason they use this costume for Zatanna, which is not the costume I would associate with her. Um, mm-hmm. and I was like, Who the hell yeah, that, that was her costume when she was on the justice league in the eighties, which yeah. I always thought was terrible. It's terrible. Uh, but <laughs> and Constantine, <laughs> well, Constantine, out that, yeah, they pointed out Constantine's like, what happened to your old costume? And she's like, you know, come on. It's like fishnets and a top hat. He's like, I thought you looked really good in that costume. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, uh, where do we go? The the Swamp Thing crew finds the demon Etrig in there. Um, he, he ends up joining. A lot of the demons join their side because they've got just as much to lose in all this. Um, Constantine then has the fifth richest man in the world, Steve something. Who is this guy? Um, was this Mento later? Is this the same guy? No. No, I, I got the guy from Doom Patrol, right? Right. Who's this guy? I don't remember. They just called him Steve, and I found no other way to identify him unless they they linked it up somehow and I mixed it up. Uh, but they put this helmet on. I don't know. He he needs him to like use this uh, helmet to contact the spirit dimension, and so he's like, okay, I'm gonna use it, and he like taps in. He's kind of horrified by all this, and he's like, oh my god, I see this bird. It used to be a woman. Oh, it's in hell and it's smoldering and screaming. Oh, it dropped the pearl. The pearl's falling. Um, we see we we're seeing all this happen. The bird is dead. Uh, the messenger is dead, but the message has been delivered. It lands in the water. Something is coming up. Uh oh. Uh, whew, on to the last issue here. Uh, the end, which is not going to be end. the end of Moore's run because there's still two more. Two more collections, but two more volumes. But uh, yeah, Swamp Thing three hundred and fifty, a big anniversary issue, uh, so it is a little bit bigger. Um, so Steve Dayton is that is Mento. He's the guy that was in, at the bar with Batman, where Batman was like, "Oh yeah, I was at your wedding." So it is Mento. Okay, Steve yes. is Mento. Thank you. Yes. Um, also, is apparently the fifth richest person in the world. He's drawn very differently by the different artists with a very yes. different suit. Um, anyways, same guy. He's wearing a helmet in the next issue, which makes it easier to know that he's meant to. <laughs> it, it much, it's much easier. Um, <laughs> so on to chapter eight, uh, Cain and Abel here. And have Cain and Abel, have we seen them in this story before? Have they been in the Marvel universe or in the DC universe? 
They were in, there's an issue where um, it is a retelling of, I think it's a House of Mystery issue where oh. like a monster comes back. Um, and yeah, Kane, I think, is in that one. So uh, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely gonna give you. I want to say, is he in the one where they like reappropriated the original Swamp Thing story, and they used yeah like, Kane or Abel as a framing device? Yeah, yeah, but it's like it's an older issue of another comic that they like oh. turned into an issue of Swamp Thing. Yeah. All right, and we are jumping into chapter eight now with Swamp Thing number. Why did I write 350? It's Swamp Thing number 50, uh, a big <laughs> anniversary issue. All right, we're a little out of it here. Real talk, everybody. We are now recording Chapter 8 a week later. We had some internet issues last time, uh, but we're back. So we're not going to remember anything that we said. We're still going to go on to, to EarthX. So uh, now you know what happened. That's why this episode's a week late. All right. <laughs> um, but all right, let's get into Chapter 8. Um, you're going to have better memories than I, than we do listeners in terms of what's been going on so far, but, uh, I think we'll be good. You know, crisis stuff, swamp thing. Yeah. It's all actually, fine. How actually, complicated could it be? Yeah. Actually, you know, do us a favor, just stop right now and then come back oh. a week later. That will, yeah, that will. that's a good idea. That way you're on our level. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So we got, uh, Kane and Abel, they are, uh, they're like messing with a well, um, what are they doing here with this well? I think Abel is like lifting an anvil out of there or something. Yeah, yeah. Kane Kane's killing Abel. Um, the reason. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Abel was killed. La- yeah, last issue, and now he's coming out of the well after he was thrown in there. Ah, that's right. Okay. Okay. And and, and I think the reason this feels so, and we talked about this, you know, that like um, they're in House of Mystery and House of Secrets. They're the narrators, but they're also all over Sandman, including the Netflix Sandman series. Yeah. And that's that's mm. where I'm starting to get confused. Like. Oh, I know. No, this isn't Neil Gaiman. This is Alan Moore. Remember that. Yes. A- Neil Gaiman is writing like 80s Alan Moore for a good chunk of, of Sandman. So, yeah, yeah. And this arc in particular, I think, does feel the most Sandman y. I this mean, I don't issue, know. We'll talk about our final. Talk. This issue, yeah. yeah, you could take out, you could put Dream instead of Sandman in this issue, and I feel like it'd be. Instead of Swamp Thing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Thank you. But um, yes, they uh, so they kind of go off to the cliff edge and they see Swamp Thing and all the demons and everyone walking around. Um, and Swamp Thing is thinking about, oh, I helped one community destroy another because it posed a threat. Uh, did history as vilest butchers do any worse? Is evil unavoidable? Having all those kinds of thoughts. He's basically recapping because I, I would assume like maybe people are popping in for the anniversary issue. That's Mm -hmm. a big double sized issue. And he's recapping like these are all the different evil things that Constantine has shown me over the last like 10 issues, Um, which uh, we've broken kayfabe. Um, But like (laughs) rereading this issue a week later, I'm like, oh, I see why he's setting this all up. Okay, like he's recapping all this (laughs) in our memory right now. So then that'll come into play later. Um, right. yeah. And we do have a lot of characters in this book. It is like for a double sized swamp thing, it has maybe like the least, I don't want to say the least swamp thing. It's just like the double size is filled with other people instead of swamp yeah. thing. Um, it's just as But uh, yeah. Uh, yes, Constant, Constantine and his whole crew uh, with the seance are getting ready for, for their whole deal. Um, the, the rich guy, Steve, what was his name? Mento? Yeah. Mento. Um, yeah. He is the, the one who's going to be. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to be uh, uh, the one channeling all this dangerous energy through himself. But as long as everybody holds hands the whole time, he'll be fine. Don't worry. It does. That's um, really cool. I like that the stakes are like you have to hold hands or yes. else this is going to end badly for us. I like that. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, I like it's basically like a magical circuit. Like they're going to cause like a short and explode something if mm-hmm. you let go. Yeah. Um, and I do like how they really don't know what's been going on with Swamp, with Swamp Thing. Uh, Mento starts getting these visions of uh, what Swamp Thing is doing. And he's hanging out with a bunch of demons and stuff. And he's like, oh, they're on our side? Okay, cool. Yeah, it's like, it, it, some of them are like, what the fuck? Etrigan's there? Um, yeah. and, and this is where like the cool like demon stuff happens. Like Etrigan is like mm-hmm. building this armor by like grabbing like little like prawn crawdad crawfish yeah, kind like of things living scorpions and like starfish and everything yeah. he's just attaching living stuff to his uh his armor it's like by um, jamming it in but i mean that's pretty cool like to just like glue a bunch of scorpions um into mm-hmm. your, it's kind of like a, i guess it's more like a light bright is what you it's more like you know you're sticking the little, a like, light bright you know like the light bright you put the little like you know like the little holes it goes in the peg sure. holes and it lights up but he's doing that with scorpions and there's i, I imagine it's like a pegboard or a cork board of his armor and then <laughs> sure. he's jamming sure. in the scorpions in 
I see. I just envision it like an action figure with like battle armor attachments and things like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that the, the light bright connection did not dawn on me with uh, with demon the demon Etrigan attaching scorpions to his body. But uh, it was a very it know. was a very common thing in the eighties. That, that's, it was. Well, it that's was. what Moore was drawing on. I'm sure. Yes. Um, <laughs> and then he uh, but this is, he has my favorite quote here, uh, where he says, "My armor writhes, anticipating war." I just I love that his armor can can tell the war is coming. It's gross. Yeah, his it's armor's very... writhing around. No, thank you. Yes. Um, I keep writing. I was like, like Dr. Fate and Phantom Stranger show up, but it's not Dr. Fate. What is it? Captain yeah, it's not, Fate? No, it's Dr. Fate. Dr. Fate's Dr. correct. Dr. Fate. Okay, yes. okay. Here's Here's I, got that. I feel like Pierce I got Brosnan. that wrong a week ago. Um, yes. Yeah, we, as we established, it's Pierce Brosnan from the Black Adam movie. Yeah, so. Um, Mento is telling everybody what's going on. Etrigan riding into battle on this giant steed, mowing down demons. Uh, he gets beaten, though, by this – basically this big darkness has been awakened now. It's um, like this big black black mud thing that's just kind it's of like taking him in. Thing, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. like a wall or an obelisk. Like it's just yeah. a like top to bottom of the panel black thing. Mm-hmm. And um, there's just like this voice talking to him that we don't, you know, we don't really see it. It's the voice of this this dark evil, um, and uh, he calls him like little thing. Hey, tell me, tell me what I am, little thing. And Etrigan's like evil. And he goes, yeah, you're not the one I'm looking for. Yeah, and he's like, I'm here to it's... fight you. And he's like, you've taught me whatever how to be mad at somebody. Yeah, it throws him out, spits him out. He's all. I think even one of the characters is like, oh, I chewed him up and spat him right out. Um. And, and Mento was kind of confused. He was like, I don't see Etrigan at all. Where did he go? What happened to him? Oh, there he is. And, um, yeah, kind of, you know, everything just disappears in there. Um, the creature moves on. It's creating these shockwaves, and it's attacking the seance circle. Um, and Sargon, the sorcerer, who <laughs> we barely knew him, but he, st- he straight up starts burning to death. Um, and he, he's, everyone has to hold, keep holding hands with him while he's burning. Which, yeah, he's um, his dead body that they're gonna have to hold hands with for the rest. But I, yeah. and I also love Zatanna's dad. I can't remember his name right now. But <laughs> Zatara. 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 Okay, thank you. And he goes, Sargon, you are upsetting my daughter. For the honor <laughs> of our profession, be silent and die like a sorcerer. <laughs> he's like, oh yeah, sorry. And he dies. <laughs> uh, like it's so cool. I mean, it's all it's like fucked up. Like if you if you've watched like the Witcher TV show at all, this is like kind of like the bleakness yes. of magic. Mm-hmm. Like really like taps into this. Like every single magical spell. Like yeah, people die during casting spells. Yeah, We're just gonna hold exactly. hands. That's how it fucking is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's exactly like the Witcher, where it's like, hey, don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> just <laughs> die. Just die. Uh, then, uh, so then Dr. Fate gets, uh, goes through the same thing that, uh, Etrigan did where he gets caught in the darkness, uh, gets spit out. You're not the one I'm looking for again. Uh, then the seance circle gets attacked again. It's Zatanna this time. Uh, so Zatara does a quick spell. He says, darkness, take me instead. But like the backwards magic thing. Yeah. Um, it always bothers me that each individual word is reversed, but not the whole phrase. Dude, that's Come exactly on. what I thought. Like, like, it's, I'm like, like. Yeah. Like, I'm like, are we doing like a line thing? Like, you know, where we, you know, I'm thinking like manga, you know, like just do I do the whole line backwards or do I do the whole paragraph backwards? Word by word. Word by word, which is really like, that's even more disorienting for me. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense for magic. How would language work like that? Whatever. Um, I guess you're saying every word backwards. I would say the whole phrase backwards would seem to make more sense to me. It would. And, and, And even then, I'd probably think it'd be even more like phonetically backwards. Rather than, you know, like, you know, oh, not like saying like that. Right. At that point, I mean, comics are on a page. <laughs> what do you... This guy can cast spells. You can write it out he, This guy, backwards. This yeah. guy's about to be killed by a black obelisk that's in heaven yeah. targeting him, but I don't like the way that his spell We're gonna, is yeah. phrased. We're going to yeah. deconstruct <laughs> these Um all right, so the um, so Zatanna's dad dies because he directs the spell back at him, uh, and she he has to like keep... a champ, though. He, yeah. She... She has to keep holding her dad's dead hand. Uh, she's pissed at Constantine for all this. And yeah, she she's not happy. And they're ex-lovers too. So that's like a double uh, whammy. Yeah. 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 Uh, then we get another hero shows up. A, a giant version of the Spectre uh, shows up to fight the darkness. And he gets swallowed up and spit out just like everybody else. Still no good. He's not answering work. these questions right. This is like yep. these like Sphinx questions almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My favorite is how the specter is like this giant uh, sort of vengeful god, but he has like little pixie boots. <laughs> <laughs> like Robin. He's got a, that green. It's a nice, uh, it's a very bright green for a character so dark, you know? But I yeah. yeah. He's like, I'm the avenging angel of the DC universe, but I also wear little boots. 
Yeah. Um, this is not so with then, Hal Jordan Spectre at this point, right? No. This it's was like, it's like Oregon the or something. Golden Age uh, Spectre. Or maybe was there a different Silver Age? But yeah, this is pre-Hal Jordan. That's modern age. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then uh, Swamp Thing sees Spectre get spit out, and he's like, all right, I'm heading in. He just kind of voluntarily walks into it. Uh, we get a full page of darkness, and, uh, you know, he talks about he came in resignation. He talks about what he's seen, is evil real, what the Parliament of Trees said. He's like, he's just thinking about everything. He doesn't know. He's very, Swamp Thing is very lost right now. Right, and um, he he's basically just, you know, like, I don't know. These the Parliament of Trees were like, is evil even real, or like, is it just like a part of nature? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and the darkness says, "I see, little thing. I sense a great and final end approaching. I would be alone." And you just let Swamp Thing walk out of there. Okay. Uh, the demon Etrigan is awake again. The Spectre is weeping, uh, and then we we like see this light reaching down from the heavens with a hand, and the darkness is reaching up with its own hand. And they're almost touching, and Mento is narrating all this, and he's freaking the fuck out. He's freaking the fuck out this entire issue. He is just like, oh, oh my God, what's going happen? Um, and then it's over. These hands just, like, touch, and the whole thing ends. Um, Mento's brain is straight up fried. He is He's dead. Uh, I think he's dead. Is he dead? He's brain dead. He's brain dead. Um, and I think someone's like, all right, did, did we win? And Constantine's like, nah, it's not really a victory. It's kind of more of a draw here. Um, and I, I'm not a hundred percent sure what happened, but yeah, it's it's just kind of over. Everything was held at bay. Uh, Dead man and stranger talked to the Swamp Thing. Uh, the lightness, the uh, the light and darkness aren't gone. They're just dissipated into everywhere around them now. Just kind of like spread back into the world. Uh, they say that the conflict between them has altered now. And yeah, Cain and Abel are like, what are we going to do? Most of our stories about are about good and evil. And they're like, well, we'll have to just find a way to tell stories that are morally gray. <laughs> uh, and then uh, and then Cain pushes Abel off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> In the end. Um, yeah, so uh, that was Swamp Thing, um, volume four. I, I liked it. I think there were parts of it that were my favorite and then parts of it that were maybe my least favorite part of uh, the whole Swamp Thing series. Um, I don't know about y'all. I just I, there were it got to be a little bloated at the end with all these extra characters. But I don't know the whole story and everything leading up to that I thought was excellent. Um, how did y'all feel? Yeah, I mean, I so uh, like we've read now, I guess, four of these now. Uh, Mm -hmm. over the run of this show and i feel like the single issues were probably like the strongest or stronger like i really like these ones seemed like very clear cut dry they didn't seem like kind of like bloated or like esoteric like i i I understood these like one-off stories a lot better um i felt they were like just like nice easy breezy reading i thought the winchester story was really good um the um that killer one that was like saying like with the eyes and stuff i thought that was a really cool like art touch I liked all this. I feel like this. I sometimes I think when uh, books start talking about like the nature of good and evil, and we're gonna get this with Earth X. I'm kind of like, I don't really care. <laughs> um, but um, but it's also like intriguing, and I like the idea. And it's very much like in line with like the idea of the green and the rot and the red. That like the idea of like death and decay is not an inherently evil concept. It's just like part of the cycle of life like and if things get out of balance then yeah that's you know problematic like um and that's what i've liked about like swamp thing and animal man they did this a lot in the new 52 was like kind of talking about like the balance of everything and there's nothing like inherently good or evil although i would say like cruelty and those kind of things are definitely like evil and they don't seem very (laughs) productive um but the the book doesn't really seem like to really like go into that concept and uh you know but it, it was good. I like. I liked it a lot. It lose. It, this one lost its focus on Swamp Thing. I feel, but I still thought it was is cool. Um, I like the art. I like Constantine. I like the whole um, crew um, with their seance and stuff. Um, and I can see why. Like Constantine's. A, I don't know if he does have his book yet, but he's about to get it. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's going to be a good time. Yeah, uh, Chris, how about you? No, I agree with uh, what y'all are saying. I think in a sense it is uh, the issues are very strong because we have a, such a good sense of who Swamp Thing is and kind of what to expect from the story. But I also was a little disappointed by the last couple of issues because it's barely about Swamp Thing anymore. 
it's about you know all these other guys um which you know the sandman series is definitely very guilty of as well as far as just like dream just shows up and is like what does it all mean and doesn't do anything um that, i mean that's kind of what he does a lot of the time <laughs> uh but it is like it's hard to write like a big event type comic uh where your protagonist doesn't do anything yeah yeah and i think that's also part of it i think um what you're saying about we've gotten to know Swamp Thing, and I think this arc also gave us the most evolution of Swamp Thing in a way, and just kind of you know showing us a little bit more of his his truth, even if you know it kind of ended a little wishy washy with him unsure of himself, and then focused elsewhere. Um, I think that was the stuff I really enjoyed the most about it. Um, but I think that's it for for Swamp Thing this episode. I'm sure we'll return to it uh, fairly soon. How many how many total more volumes are Two there? More. Is it six? Yeah, I think he's more. got fifteen much more. Is, fifteen issues. Maybe I think he does. I think he goes to like issue sixty three or sixty five. I can't remember offhand. Yeah. So there's two um, more volumes though. So. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure we'll finish that, um, or at least get to another. Uh, yeah, I, I, within I, the year. I, I think like we talked about this off air with like lock and key, but I think when we say like we're going to continue reading these series, it's dependent on whether or not we like them um, and want to <laughs> continue doing them. Um, and I, I'm definitely in the camp of like, yeah, I want to read another Swamp Thing. I want to finish this yeah, out at this point. Sure. So. Uh, cool, cool. Uh, but let's jump over to our new long read that we are starting with this episode. Uh, we are going on to Earth X. Uh, which came out in the early 2000s. I think it said 1999. Uh, 1999, actually. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, 1999. Uh, we got Alex Ross doing getting top billing for doing the covers. Um, and we got uh, Jim Kruger writing, John Paul Leon on art. R.I.P. Uh, and it is R.I.P., that's right. And it's um, it's set in the future of the Marvel Universe. Uh, and we, you know, I don't want to talk too much about what this future is because this first uh, issue in, with Earth X number zero not doesn't be really focus on that at all. So I think let's jump into this. We'll be a little surprised by what the future holds for yeah. its next issue. Do, but um, do we want to talk about the creative team at all? I know I don't really know Jim Kruger that well. It seems like he's always involved with like Alex Ross. Like he wrote Justice with Alex Ross yeah. for DC. Um, I don't really know much about him. John Paul Leon we've covered before with like Static Shock. Um, and mm -hmm. he did that Superman um, Secret Identity, I want to say, with Kurt Busiek that we really liked. Um uh, he did that? No, he didn't. He did the sequel to it, the the Dark Knight one, the Batman version of Secret Identity. Ah, yes, um, yes. But uh, which we didn't cover. And then he he's just been around. He was a real good like journeyman like painted artist. We covered him for something recently, but I've I've always liked his art. Um, it's a little mm -hmm. weird seeing him do cosmic stuff, um, because he seems more like a grounded like kind of like in the, in the Gotham Central kind of like Ed Brubaker area of art. But but it's it's very good art. Yeah, it's um. Uh... It's, it's, I don't want to call it muddy, but it does kind of give me, especially like, it, it, I don't know, it just looks muddy. But maybe that's also kind of the inking, but like muddy in a good way. I don't know. Yeah, There's it looks really nice good. I think at the time when I think you gave this to me, you were like, "This is an Alex Ross like book," and I'm like, "This looks nothing like Alex Ross," and I was like, <laughs> instantly like. But now, yeah. like, twenty years later, he, I'm like, "Oh, this he, is he does the covers, right?" Yeah, I, right. That's yeah. All. yeah. And the, I, the, he has a story credit too, right? Or did, does he not have a story credit for this one? Because I know. The story behind this is that Alex Ross kind of pitched this idea. Yeah, that, I, I I couldn't find anything, but it sure as heck seemed it's, like it was a you it know, was an Alex Ross. Stuff. It says based on Alex Ross's notes. Right, there you exactly. go. Yeah. Um, so I think he did probably do a lot of character designs and things like that, and they just kind of turned that into this uh, this interesting future here. Um, but uh, I think let's jump into the story. We'll talk more about um, all the different uh, – little uh, future bits next time but for right now we've got uh, the preview issue earth x number zero which again we thought was going to be a shorter issue but uh it's not it's a lot longer um but we start with aaron stack who is the son of machine man abel no, stack no, no he is machine no. Man. aaron stack is machine man oh and this oh and this that predates makes a lot more sense. Yep. next wave which when <laughs> yes. machine man was like my robot brain craves beer and he was funny he's not funny yeah. here well, yeah, yeah, because there's a in next wave. There's a part where all the celestials hold up a L sign and kick him out of being a watcher. Oh, really? Uh, yes. <laughs> wow. um, so it's a Earth X joke. Yeah, interesting. Uh, that's good. So his his dad was Abel Stack, who created Machine Man. That's right. Who is Aaron Stack? Who 
<laughs> is still alive because he's a robot, of course. Uh, and he uh, uh, wakes up in the middle of the night. He gets transported to the moon. And he had, like, kind of this fake uh, human face on. But he gets churned into his robot self up there. And he sees, like, there's a big home on the moon. And like, somebody's watching the Earth from up here. Uh, and we meet Uatu, the Watcher, uh, who has brought X-51 up there to catalog and hey, don't survey. don't use his dead name. I don't like that. I, I, I Wait, feel what? like it's like he's like, don't call me X51. I want to be called Aaron. And watch is like, I don't have time for this. I'm calling you X51. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, it's kind of a dick move. You want, want it to. is kind of a dick move. Yeah. Oh. Also, uh, and more trivia about Machine Man. Uh, his first appearance was in the Jack Kirby 2001 is Space Odyssey uh, Marvel comic. Really? Uh, oh. So there are references to that whenever he I mean, he basically has the. Uh, ending of 2001 before he gets transported to the moon. Oh, is that what that like black um, art was? That's cool. yeah. He sees like an obelisk, yeah, and then is uh, transported. I was like, oh, just like in his first appearance. I oh, see. Dude, that's why we have you here, Chris. So, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so um, uh, he's like, all right, X51, I brought you up here to catalog and survey everything that happened because it's our role. He's like, it's our role. Like, okay, okay, hold on. Let me back up. Uh, and I think he backs up a little too much because he then proceeds to give Machine Man a whole <laughs> history of the Earth. Uh, he saw the dawn of life. He saw the first Celestials. Yeah, and they... like, the, the Celestials get rid of the dinosaurs. And he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, uh, we, we, got, we got a whole bunch of Marvel history and kind of I, I, a lot of it is going to pertain to the story, but not not most of it here. Uh, so we'll, we'll breeze through some of this. <laughs> we and thought we, this was going to be like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the celestial, easy breezy. <laughs> so the Celestials molded the first humans, did experiments on them, um, and they were a failure. They made the Deviants, uh, which were like, I don't know, the first villains officially in the Marvel Universe, maybe, unless you count the Celestials for creating them. Um they uh and x51 is like well, why did they make them with aggression it's like x51 humans ask why we just watch and wait and see it's like okay cool um the second race the celestials made was the eternals they came out a lot better better the they uh, settled on the mountaintops and became humanity's oldest myths of gods okay while the deviants hid below in the valley and enslaved whoever they could um and so this is uh, like, uh, yeah, you know, we, we covered Eternals. There was an Eternals movie, yeah. um, yes, Icarus yes. or Sea and stuff. Did y'all ever see the Eternals movie? I still no. did not. It's it it takes like an hour to get interesting. Um, and, and here it kind of is still like dovetailing with the movie. The, the movie I'm going to say right now, it, it gets interesting when you discover the Celestials are trying to like birth a new god inside of Earth. And Earth is like an egg. And they need mm-hmm. like to feed off of like life energy. So the Eternals exist to like protect life so that then the celestial when it hatches can eat all of life. And a couple of the Eternals are like, what the fuck? And so then the Eternals turn on each other and they fight each other. And that's pretty cool. But for the first time, yeah. this is boring. Um, this, <laughs> this is the eternal stuff that I don't care about. I was like, yeah, they're yeah. protecting the celestials. I'm like, you got to give me like an extra hook or some type of intrigue. Mm-hmm. Here. And this is not. And, yet. and this is just the same as assassins creeds, uh, elaborate mythology about gods were actually ancient aliens uh it's jack kirby stealing uh, i guess homaging or borrowing uh, assassin's creed he was a big assassin's creed fan <laughs> eric eric von donikin's uh, chariots of the gods yeah. and uh, all of that stuff as far as ancient aliens uh, origins uh so Star he did game. that in yeah in the yeah exactly in the 70s eternals series which is all based on that uh, you also had the uh, deviants are based in Lemuria, which is a, uh, I think, 19th or early 20th century, like adventure novel, uh, lost race kind of thing like Atlantis. Uh, that's also uh, gets folded into all of this. Um, so, yeah, it's just, you know, com- this is what comics used to do. They used to just take trash culture and throw it all together like this. Mm hmm. Um, we learned about how the Kree were here too. They, uh, they tried to create an army of super beings to help fight the scrolls and they used the Terrigen mists to reshape humanity. Cause they all already had the seeds inside of them from the celestials. And next, if you want to go ahead, this is explaining why Jack Kirby created two different <laughs> versions of ancient aliens. Yes. <laughs> one, the inhumans, one, the eternals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I, I and, do like how they lampshade it because Machine Man uh, Aaron is like, what the? 
like, what? Like, <laughs> like he did, this happened twice? And no one heard about this? <laughs> Uh, he he's getting tired of it too. He's like, "Come on, man, just like tell me about the humans." And Watu, he's like, "Hey, I watch the Earth, not just humans." <laughs> all right, that's fair. Um, and then he says, "All right, twenty five thousand years ago, the deviants enslaved all of mankind. Uh, there's no record of this history because the Celestials wiped out the deviants violently. They destroyed Atlantis in the process, killed a whole bunch of people." Um, and there's, there's no record of any of this. Yeah, this is uh, what Von Daniken and other ancient alien people say all flood myths are based yes. on. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm on board uh, so far. Yeah, this makes sense. <laughs> yep. Um, an X-51. All real. And, I mean, like, I don't know what happened. I, I barely know. We ba- I barely know what happened 500 years ago. Like, sure, shit didn't. We didn't record it 25,000 years ago. It's all lost. That's fine. That's cool. 500 yep. years ago, we have pretty good records. <laughs> nope. We're pretty good, but still, I have to read them, and I'm not reading them. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, I'm not listening to scientists or historians. <laughs> I'm listening to comic book podcasts yeah. for my Give history. The... Of, I've never heard of Lemuria until you told me about it. It sounds it's really cool. Yeah. It's a band. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's sunk in the Indian Ocean like Atlantis. That sounds cool as shit. I had to learn about true. that from a comic book podcast because no one's teaching yeah, me that. Yeah, you cool. did. Yeah, and the, mm-hmm. the reason it's called Lemuria, this is also true. It's because there were okay. lemur skeletons in India, and they were like, oh, there's lemurs in Madagascar, lemur skeletons in India. There must be a hidden continent. That sounds cool as shit. Each. That sounds cool as shit. <sighs> Thanks I'm a lot, too. I, I agree. Right. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so X-51 is like, hey, I think these celestials sound evil. They created the deviants, and then they killed them and killed a whole bunch of other people in the process. And the Watcher is just like, hey, what is innocence? What is evil? What is evil? Yeah. We should throw yeah. some people into a black obelisk and we'll ask them yeah, questions about what's evil. Say, let's take it to a swamp thing, mm-hmm. not to. I'm tired of this. Uh, <laughs> so then the uh, then the third host came to Earth. It was all the gods of Asgard and Olympus, and the celestials said, hey, just stand back and observe. Don't mess with them. <laughs> and, and they didn't say they had seeds in them that they were trying to protect. Okay. Um, then we get to the 20th century about learn seeing about how war has always been, how humans developed, uh, because peace is the enemy of progress. Interesting. Yeah. Um, World War II sparked humanity's greatest scientific achievements and germinated the celestial seed. And I we was had... sold this 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 uh, military propaganda in the 90s too. I, I heard mm-hmm. that too. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I do I do like again X52 is just like hey how come you've got so many pictures of Namor up here. <laughs> So hold on, it's X fifty one. That's not right. X. <laughs> who's X twenty three? X twenty three. There's a lot of X. That's, yeah, that's uh, what's her name? That's uh, <laughs> yeah, little Wolverine. Yeah, yeah baby but yes. Yeah, so he's like Namor is very important. I just think uh, Namor is cool. <laughs> yeah, Watu <laughs> has a pretty weak justification for why. Oh he cares yes, so much about <laughs> he's my yeah, favorite. I, I, Shut X-51 up. Fifty one calls him out. Yeah, why are you talking about this guy so much? Um, uh, we Did learned you see his how first appearance? it was fucking rad. <laughs> it was it was rad. Yeah, remember uh, in uh the that Kurt Busiek Alex Ross series, the whole mm-hmm. first issue is about Namor versus Human Torch. It's cool. Oh, and then yes, and he's like, hey, Namor was born of Atlantis as a result of the Celestials, who you said was evil. You think that's still evil? He became the greatest <laughs> hero of the war. So what do you think? And it's like, oh shit, I don't know. Um we we see about Hitler and the Red Skull and the atomic bomb and uh, monsters became easier to define. Mankind enraged, blah blah blah. Uh, more and more heroes starting to come up because of the celestial seeds waking up. Peter Parker, Reed Richards, Ruben, Bruce Banner, Matt Murdock. Namor returns in the future. Uh, he's uh, he's been a vagrant since World War II. Sees Atlantis destroyed. Uh, this is when X fifty one asks, "Why do you keep showing me Namor?" He's, like, he's the pendulum that swings between the polarities of deviant and eternal. Born directly from that seed, the second face of man. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Captain America comes out of ice, blah, 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 Galactus. Uh, oh, and he's like, yeah, I gave him the ultimate null- nullifier to Reed Richards to stop Galactus because I'd seen Galactus before. And if he destroys the Earth, I got no job. <laughs> All right, <next> <laughs> um, <laughs> mutations started to happen. Uh, Look, and the we celestial stopped, seed we, was born we, naturally. We, yeah, we didn't even want to deal with with. <laughs> Different, you know, there was nothing special that got tapped out, and then it's just it's just in the air now. It's fine. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, we got the Inhumans. Uh, we got Adam Warlock. We see him, friend of the show. Uh, mankind creating their own deviants who who went against their uh, their masters. Uh, and then the fourth host arrived, which I guess is the heroes. Is that what they were talking about? They didn't really name them. Um, hated by the people they're sworn to protect, and we're going to keep watching them. And now X-51's job is to be the new watcher because Uatu is blind. <gasps> he was focused on watching the Earth, and someone came in from somewhere else and Didn't caught him unaware. He Didn't watch. watch his back. It's not his job. <laughs> uh, and Who then, watches uh, the watcher? Who watches the watcher? Oh, yeah, that's good. Um, and he said he brought X-51 up here because his capacity for knowledge is limitless because he's a robot and anyone else would be driven to madness. And so he says, all right, so tell me what's been going on. I missed a lot in the last few years. <laughs> OK, great. Um, yeah, that's the first issue. I, you know, it sets up the premise at least pretty well that it's going to be Uatu talking to the watcher, telling him what's going on in this future. Um. It did seem weird that it was so focused on the past and didn't it didn't even tell us how far in the future we really are, did it? Like maybe it yeah. did at the very beginning, but it didn't uh, it just didn't sell the idea of future uh, very much. Or honestly, it didn't get me excited for the series one bit. Right. Uh, so like, well, yeah. and I, I'm assuming like if you were sold this on Wizard magazine, like what what's the premise of the book still? Like I, 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 I remember it being like a future dystopia kind of thing but i didn't get that far because it was like but i was like this is a lot of celestials and eternals and it's it's oh four i'm reading this i don't want to read this i'm good <laughs> um so that's where i was at but like i'm I, i'm excited to dig in and i'm hoping that this will help me like get through it because i i know that people like this book and i think y'all like I, I feel like you liked this book back in the day i remember liking it but again i remember liking stuff in the past that did not hold up so we'll see <laughs> At the very least, we'll get some cool future versions of shit. And yeah. <laughs> that'll be fun enough to talk yeah, about. And eventually pave the way for us to read Doom 2099. What? <laughs> I don't know. I just want yeah, to just mention cool future stuff. I think that's 30 years old or something. Now Doom 2099. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, probably, probably the best 2099. Well, Spider-Man 2099, the first few issues were good. good. That was really yeah. good. We should go back to we that. We had a good sometime. time. Yeah. Uh, Chris, how did you feel about it? Um, You know, I, I like... <laughs> marvel you know secret history of the universe as like a pitch uh but this is uh pretty dry this was not particularly exciting um i am hoping that this is going to set up uh cool things happening but as a like as a issue zero there's really not a lot of like teases it's mostly just like all right everybody uh open your textbooks to page 347 mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, well, hopefully yeah. it'll improve next time. We're jumping into Earth X number one. We are not reading Earth X number one half. Um, There's an Earth X one was, half. <laughs> it was like a special wizard promotional okay. magazine. Okay. That's, that one is. That's a, what we should have read. <laughs> that's maybe what we should have read, honestly. Oh no. Um, but um, I'm reading we only are, one piece of this book at a time. I'm not reading the half pieces. A half piece. <laughs> um, but no, we're jumping into issue one next time. It'll be uh, some future stuff. We'll go there. And then our main read next time, we're going to read some manga again. Um, we've only we, – we've talked about how we've maybe not done uh, manga the uh, the justice it might deserve here. Um, we've done a lot of video game manga. We did that Mario manga, some Zelda. I think that's all we've really done. Yeah, yeah a few Zelda issues. Um, I read Persona manga on the side, but that's, that's – Okay, I, okay. That's all the only um, manga. And Pokemon manga. I had great that doesn't that's, that's more video game stuff. Oh, damn it. that's all video game stuff come on <laughs> uh, but we are reading a i mean it ha it's had video games made of it but we yeah. are reading one of the most popular manga in the world we're gonna read some one piece um we're just gonna check out volume one romance dawn it's the first eight chapters of the story uh written and drawn by ichiro oda um i've, ne I've i think i've read the first chapter or two i know how popular it is i was just kind of curious to check it out um you, you guys don't have any experience with it? No, right? I know that it's popular. There, there's, there's a Netflix series, the live action. Like a live series. at it? Yeah, yeah. And then they put all of the uh, the the uh, anime, or most a lot of the anime on, on Netflix as well. I think it's something like 900 episodes, also, so maybe not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. Like I know that like people in the anime and manga circles that I, I kind of fall in seem to really enjoy it. It mm -hmm. looks pretty like fun and light. 
Um, so I'm, I, and then I think there's a bunch of Muso games on it based on, as you mentioned, video games, like, like dynasty warriors mm-hmm. types of games. Um, so I'm excited, um, to check out some, some, some one piece and then maybe dip into the Netflix show. I think me and my wife will end up watching it. Cool. Chris, are you excited? Uh, sure. I understand there's a guy, <laughs> there's a guy with a little hat. Uh, um, yeah, that's the limit of my knowledge. He's about a pirate. Maybe he, maybe he goes to Lemuria. I yeah, he's, he's got a little. He grins uh, in a distinctive way, I guess. But yeah, I know nothing about this other than there's a lot of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited to check it out. Uh, we'll see if EarthX uh, starts being entertaining, uh, <laughs> or if it's more dry history lesson of alternate universe. Blah blah blah. See what happens. Let's see what happens. You see the celestial, and again, Vince. I know you were saying like, "Oh, it got more interesting," but it's like all of that's in this, and it's I don't know. It was more like I was just like, "Internals, you need to get to this premise where it gets mildly interesting more than an hour into this movie, or less than an hour," because it was like, "Yeah, like the Eternals are gonna fight amongst themselves, and like some of them are gonna like protect Earth, and some of them are gonna you know protect the Celestials' interests." I'm like, "That's interesting." It took an hour to reveal that concept. And, we're yeah. still, and we didn't like that Eternals comic either. We're we're just mad at the no. Eternals always. No, we don't like the Eternals. Um, we also, I mean, in the Inhumans TV show, I, I don't understand why. I, like, this is not a comic that anyone has read and been like, more of this, please. But the hubris that they're like, but we can make a movie out of it. This thing that's never been a well, series. It's never been popular. <laughs> well, it, it, it seems like the Inhumans part in Earth X, it even seems like it's a dig. At, like At some point, they're kind of treated like mutants because why not? Because like when Marvel didn't have the rights to the X-Men for their movies, they were like, ah, we're going to make the Inhumans our mutants. Everybody that's new is an Inhuman. That's right, right? Um, yeah. So like Miss Marvel's an Inhuman and shit like but that. But she's a mutant now. Because <laughs> yeah, we have the rights back. They um, got it all back, so we don't have to yeah. do any of this second rate I, stuff. They're like, forget it. She's a mutant too. Yeah, I don't. It just feels mean, but I'm like, what? How would I rank all of Jack Kirby's like different like past societies, <laughs> like Eternals versus was it the New Gods and the Inhumans? Yep. There's yep. another one, isn't there? Uh, Thor, basically okay. all the yeah, the Norse that's gods. Num- which that's is number one. I'm going with that one. That's number one. Yeah, that's a good that, one. That's a good they one. they also get brought up very briefly in this series of like aliens showed up and started acting like gods, <laughs> not the eternal gods, <laughs> different gods, different gods. So many gods. Uh, we'll learn less about them next time. I hope. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think that's going to be it for this uh, two week spanning episode. Um, what what else do we have going on, uh, Chris? What's the Your Stupid Minds podcast been up to across this span? Your Stupid Minds just had a very special episode. We finally got to review Neil Breen's latest film, uh, which was a ton of fun. Cade, The Tortured Crossing, uh, which is a sequel to A Twisted Pair, uh, which was his 2018, I think, movie. Uh, And I say sequel. It it really isn't. No Neil Breen movie makes any more or less sense if you've seen another Neil Breen movie. (laughs) Um, But it's a lot of fun. And as an even bigger bonus, uh, Nick has a special invited a special guest, his uh, a good friend of his and a friend of mine as well. But more (laughs) Nick's known him longer. Austin Buckin (laughs) uh, from Trinity University. Uh, is a special guest. He knew nothing about the movie coming in, was <laughs> completely blind, uh, and we get his honest recap to watching the sixth Neil Brain movie, not knowing who he is or what he was in for. Wow, amazing. What, what was the name of the movie again? It's called uh, Cade, the Tortured Crossing. Uh, why? Don't know. <laughs> great, great. Cade does not cross anywhere. He's not tortured. Uh, he helps some people in the mental asylum okay. is kind of the quickest way I could sum up the plot. It is a series of scenes that don't make any sense um, that involves uh, kidnapping um, people, stealing other people's blood and putting it in a turkey baster. Oh. Uh, it's just there's a lot of uh, a lot of high tech science going on. That like you turkey baster, understand. high tech science. Yep, got it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so is, of... is is Cade a character from the previous movie and he's been bumped up like a like you know pitch black to Chronicles of Riddick? Is that why he's is he a, is Cade a person or no? 
so yeah, the twisted pair was in that movie. Kate and Kale are twins who were experimented on by AI intelligence from another planet. It gives them both superpowers. So Cade has like a cyborg guy. He's like super wealthy. He basically is like an eternal. Yeah. Okay. I, I do remember this. Yes. Yes. I do remember listening. And to this, yeah. Kale is like a deviant. He's like bad. Oh, like a Cain and Abel kind of situation. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, he's he's always trying to do bad things with his superpowers. Uh, so yeah, it's very much. Uh, like set up like that and then that was twisted pair now in the sequel it's mostly about Cade and his, it's a, his creating title. an army <laughs> yeah kale's there too but barely kale is neil green <laughs> wearing a incredibly fake beard amazing okay okay these movies i love them so much <laughs> great sounds uh sounds exciting i hope uh i hope it was a good episode uh Vince, what's if, going if, on with if you? anyone's even remotely interested, watch the trailer, and you will okay. know if you if you like this stuff, you will laugh at the trailer oh. like seven times. I'm a, you know I'm gonna jump ahead of Vince actually because I saw a great trailer today for a movie called Velocipaster. Yes, I've never uh, I, I, <laughs> yeah good trailer. If you haven't seen that, folks, check out Velocipaster. I love the title of that movie. It's it's right up it's there with the Shark and Saw Women's Prison Massacre. Um, oh that's, my. What did I For the record, see? I'm not recommending you watch the movie. Just watch the trailer. <laughs> what did I just see? I saw something. It was like Sharktopus versus Whale Wolf. It's a wolf that's a whale, but you can't. It's fun. <laughs> um well. so so uh we'll take it to me um i i was uh, recently on an episode of super switch heads again um i was i guested on them in april and i went on episode 225 of their show uh last week uh we talked about the different ceos and presidents of nintendo um so that was a lot of fun um cool cool mm-hmm. like uh gay bowser right yeah the current CEO. No, it was it was the Japanese <laughs> area, Bowser. so not Doug Bowser and not Reggie. It was more of the Furukawa, Iwata, and Yamauchi eras. It's a lot of fun, though. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, I've got uh, you know school just started. I'm busy as hell. That's, that's all I got going on. Yeah. yeah. I feel um, bad. Uh, but uh, that's that's about that. I think that's it for the episode here. Uh, we feel it feels short because we're recording this now on a separate week, and it's uh, we're we're just finishing up. But I think that's that's gonna be it. Uh, listener, oh hold on, that's not the order we do things. Back up, Vince. I love you. Love you too, bud. Chris, I love you. Twenty five thousand years ago, the Eternals. Sure. <laughs> Never mind. I don't love you. I don't need to hear that. Uh, <laughs> listener, we love you as well. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye.